Hello, today we'll be learning about the reciprocals of trigonometric functions. Let's start by looking at our coordinate plane. We are going to be talking about angle of direction first. Every time we're talking about the angle of direction, we're talking about plotting angles in our coordinate plane system. Every time you have an angle of direction, you're going to start on your positive x-axis. If your angle of direction is positive, you're going to go towards the left. If your angle of direction is negative, you're going to go towards the right. I am going to plot a few examples just so we're all familiar with some of the information. So let's say they tell us that our angle of direction is 120 degrees. Notice that it is positive, so I'm going to start on my positive x-axis. And I'm going to say this is zero degrees. Since it's positive, I'm going to go towards the left. This is going to be 90 degrees. So my angle would will be in quadrant two. And I know that this angle at the bottom is 60. This angle at the top is 30. So again, we have zero here. When I get to here, I have 90 and then 30 more to get me to the 120. So let's try to plot an angle of direction with a negative angle. Okay, so let's look at another example, but this time with a negative angle. So let's say we have the angle negative 220. If we have the angle negative 220, we're still going to start at the positive x-axis, but this time we are going to go towards the right because the angle is negative. So I'm gonna plot it and figure out which quadrant it lands on. So it's gonna be zero, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. So now I know I'm gonna start here. So I went 90 degrees towards the right, 180 degrees towards the right, and then I'm still missing 40 more. So I know this angle right here will be 40 degrees. This is called the reference angle. It's created by your line on either the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis, depending on where, which quadrant you are working with. But that's how you plot the angle of direction. It's pretty easy. We will talk about more about the relationship between the angle of direction and the reference angle. So the angle of direction will always land in one of the four quadrants and that's going to be important because based on the quadrant it will determine if the trig functions are positive or negative. I'd like to use the acronym all students take calculus to help me remember and the capital letter that you see on the screen will represent what's positive in that quadrant. So for the quadrant one all of the trigonometric func all the basic trigonometric functions are going to be positive. So we're talking about sine, cosine, and tangent. So every time you have an angle that lands on this quadrant, the value of the sine, cosine, and the tangent are going to be positive. If we look at quadrant two, we're looking at an S, meaning that sine is positive. And then that means that the other two are negative. So cosine and tangent are negative. When we look at the third one, the T stands for tangent being positive. And then for the negative ones, we're going to have cosine and sine. And then for the last one, cosine is going to be positive and then tangent and sine are going to be negative. Keep that in mind, we will talk more about it in a little bit, but remember the acronym, all students take calculus. And again, the letter represents what's positive. Quadrant one, everything will always be positive. Quadrant two, only sine is positive. Quadrant three, only tangent is positive. Quadrant four, only cosine is positive. Uh, 
in the past, we only talked about the three basic functions. We talked about sine, we talked about cosine, and we talked about tangent. If you remember, or shortcut to remember the ratios. So, ka, toa. So remember, sine of theta was equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta was equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent of theta was equal to opposite over adjacent. We are learning three new ones, so three new trigonometric functions. And they are just going to be the reciprocals of the three that we already have. So I actually put them in order. So the cosecant of theta is the same as the reciprocal of sine. If we look at the secant of theta, it's the reciprocal of cosine. So that's another way that we can write them. And the cotangent of theta is equal to the reciprocal of tangent. So if you remember back from your algebra class, the reciprocal is when you flip your numerator and denominator and they take each other's place. So if you want to write it using the sides and the hypotenuse, now we know that the cosecant of theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite. So again, you're just flipping the numerator and denominator for sine because they are the reciprocals of each other. When we look at cosine, it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And then for uh, cotangent, it's going to be adjacent over opposite. So it's just something you have to memorize. Tangent and cotangent sound very similar. They both have the word tangent in them. So these are going to be really easy to remember. And then what I do to remember the other two is that they have the opposite letter. So this one starts with the C. This reciprocal starts with an S. The other one, the original starts with an S. The reciprocal starts with the C. So they're kind of backwards. Do not put S with S and C with C because then you're going to get them wrong. Again, the opposite letters for these two and then these two sound very similar so you don't have to think about it much so let's put this into practice how do we use this to solve problems so i'm looking at the first problem that will always give you some information that will help you determine which quadrant you're on so this problem says find the exact value of each of the trigonometric functions if the secant of theta is equal to two and the tangent of theta is greater than zero, meaning the tangent is also positive. I am going to draw my four quadrants using my shortcut all students take calculus. I know the secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so I know cosine is positive and I know tangent is positive. And the quadrant where that happens is only in quadrant one. Oh, uh, as you can see, tangent has to be positive, so that takes away these two. And then you have two options left, quadrant one or quadrant three, but you also want cosine to be positive, and cosine is negative in quadrant three, so that takes it out, meaning quadrant one is your only option. Some other information that I can gather just by looking at the information they gave me is that I can find what the reciprocal of 2 is, and that will give me what the cosine is equal to. So secant is 2, cosine is going to be the reciprocal of 2. If you remember, 2 is the same thing as 2 divided by 1, so the reciprocal of 2 divided by 1 will be 1 divided by 2. So without doing much work, we have found one of the trig ratios already. I like using the basic three, so that's why I like finding that one first if they didn't give it to me, just because we're more familiar with them. I'm going to draw my triangle. Again, I know I'm in quadrant one. I know my adjacent is equal to one, my adjacent side, and I know my hypotenuse is equal to two. We know that from our Sokatoa shortcut, so I'm using the ka, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now that I know that information, 
I can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the third side is. So I know one side is equal to one. I don't know what the other side is equal to. That's what I'm looking for. This one right here. So I'm going to put x squared equals two squared. I'm going to square one. I'm going to get one back plus x squared equals two squared, which is four. I'm going to subtract one from both sides and I'm going to get x squared equals three. Take the square root on both sides. I'm going to get square root of three as my third side. I am going to leave it a square root of three because I want my answers to be exact. Now that I have all three sides, I can find sine. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it will be square root of three over two. Now that I have sine, I can find cosecant by doing the reciprocal of square root of three over two, which will be two over the square root of three. We are gonna rationalize it Every time you have a square root on the denominator, you're going to multiply by that same thing, the numerator and the denominator, to get rid of the square root on the bottom. So that will be 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. Your answer will is equivalent to each other, but notice how the second one does not have a square root in the denominator. Now that we have that information, we can move on to tangent. Tangent is opposite divided by adjacent, so it will be square root of 3 divided by 1, which is just square root of 3, and then find the reciprocal of tangent will give us cotangent, which will be 1 over the square root of 3. Again, we're going to rationalize by multiplying by square root of 3 over square root of 3. That will give us square root of 3 over 3. All of them are positive, again, because we are in quadrant 1, so we didn't have to worry much about the negatives or positives. Okay, so let's look at another problem. So they gave us some important information on this one. They said that the secant of theta is equal to negative square root of two. So I'm gonna write it here, negative square root of two. They also told me that theta is between 180 and 270. So looking at my uh, coordinate plane, zero, 90, 180, 270. So I'm now on in quadrant three. This time for sure, all students take calculus. The only things that are positive in quadrant three are tangent and its reciprocal. So tangent and cotangent are going to be positive. Everything else has to be negative. And they already gave us one here. You can see that it's negative already. So knowing that the secant of theta is equal to negative square root of 2. I'm going to use that to find the reciprocal of it, which is cosine. And it's going to be 1 over the square root of 2, with the negative, of course. I don't want to have a square root at the bottom, so I'm going to rationalize it, giving me negative square root of 2 over 2. I'm going to draw my triangle again on my third quadrant. I'm going to use the x-axis on the line that I drew to find my reference angle. I can either use the cosine or the secant, whichever one you prefer. I like using the original, like I said before. So I know that the adjacent is equal to square root of 2, and I know my hypotenuse is equal to 2. The negative only tells you which quadrant you're on, so when you put the measurements, you don't have to put them, since we're talking about length of a triangle. So now I'm going to use that to figure out what the third side is using Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say square root of 2 squared plus x squared equals 2 squared. Square root of 2 squared is equal to 2 plus x squared equals 2, 4. Subtract 2 from both sides. I get x squared equals 2. Take the square root of both sides. I get x equals square root of 2. So now I know that these two sides are congruent to each other. They're both square root of 2. Now that I have that information, I can find the sine of theta, which will be my opposite divided by my hypotenuse, which is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 as well. As you can see, these two are exactly the same. So their reciprocal will also be negative square root of 2. 
if you want to rationalize it, you can. So negative square root of two over two. And then I'm going to find the reciprocal of it to find cosecant, which will be two over the square root of two with a negative. Again, I'm going to multiply by square root of two over square root of two, giving me two square root of two over two with a negative. The twos will divide out, leaving me just a negative square root of two, which is what I had. Now to find tangent, I'm going to do my opposite divided by my adjacent, which will be square root of two over square root of two, which simplifies to one. And then the reciprocal of one is just one, which will give me the cotangent equals to one. Again, I want tangent and cotangent to be positive because I'm in quadrant three and I want everything else to be negative. So I'm just going back and double checking that I didn't miss a negative. Thank you very much and hopefully you'll learn something new. See you next time.